What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking our very first flight with the Parrot Anafi USA, a drone that's made here in the United States and also has a badge on the case that says designed for US Army. So this is a drone that is on the Department of Defense's blue UAS list. So if you're an individual or a company that needs a drone that meets those requirements, this is probably going to be a really good choice for you in terms of the performance and price point. Now I have to give a huge thanks to the team over at Influential Drones for allowing me to borrow the Parrot Anafi USA from them to make a review video here on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in learning more about what they do, be sure to check out their links and all the information down in the description. Now my experience with Parrot's Anafi line goes all the way back back to the very first consumer version of this drone they released in 2018. I still have the drone and always liked it for a couple of key reasons. The portability was great. The specs for a drone of this size that came out during this time were phenomenal. And personally, my favorite thing was the app experience. The software was top notch. Now, all those things that made the Anafi a great drone translate here over to the USA version of this drone, except it's now just more ruggedized for commercial use. They took the same airframe and just beefed it up. I mean, this is IP53 dust and water resistant and offers a lot of great features on board. And of course, it's still lightweight, inconspicuous and discreet. It's very easy to set up and get up into the air. So why don't we finally get this drone into the air with a cool little feature here called hand launch. Throw it up. That is cool, right? Points for style. Now, I overheard someone flying this drone while I was at Arium Summit, and it has a little bit of a whistle to it. I'm wearing a lav mic, so you might be, it might be a little bit hard to hear that, but regardless, it's fairly quiet, especially when you get it further away from yourself, and you can just tell it's a very zippy and snappy drone. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll get the drone up, and we'll fly it down towards the bridge. This is always the first thing that we do here on our first flights. Now let's see, we are in the sport mode. We've got a top speed of about 32 miles per hour. I'm not expecting anything super crazy in terms of speed out of a smaller drone like this one. We are getting just a little bit of signal breakup, but I will say that for the most part, it's holding itself together. We are also in a very urban environment in terms of uh, interference from Wi-Fi signal and stuff like that. So let's stop it right there. Can we go any further? I might actually have a distance limiter here on the drone. I haven't done too much digging through the settings. We are getting some breakup as we head down towards that way. So let's go ahead. We'll spin around here. We got to about 2000 feet out. We'll spin the drone around like so and bring it on back towards the home point. So that was one thing I always butt up against with the Anafi was its Wi-Fi transmission system. Seems like that's going to be the case here for the Anafi USA. So we're gonna have to keep it a little bit closer than usual for our flight here. So let's see, there are three total cameras here on the Anafi USA. We'll start to play with them a little bit as we get closer to ourselves here. So we have uh, one regular camera, we have one thermal camera, and we have one zoom camera. Bring it on back here. So as we get a little bit closer to ourselves, we'll get kind of closer to the building that we're at right now. Start to hear the drone a little bit. We are also fighting a headwind going up river. All right, there we have it. Signal is back to being nice and strong. So let's go ahead, we'll look at the building here and just to kind of cycle you through some of the different cameras right here on the controller, we've got a button that switches over to the thermal overlay. So you might see a quick black screen here as we kind of translate from the regular camera over to the thermal camera. And what it does is it actually overlays our thermal sensor or a thermal image over top of the color image. So it gives us a little bit more clarity there. So we're waiting for it to come on over here. It says three, two, one, it's waiting to record. And now we have our thermal overlay. So as you can see, we still have the color image around the outsides and we also have the thermal image right here in the center. And that again gives us more clarity, but also gives us some more, um, some more uh, you know, situational awareness as to what's going on around the drone. Now from here, what's really cool is we can continue to cycle through some of the different thermal settings. So from here, we could actually cycle over and just see like the hotter areas, and the, or I'm sorry, the colder areas. And then we could cycle over and see the warmer areas. So we can kind of isolate what we want to look at. And this could be really helpful for say a search and rescue situation where you're looking for those hot temperatures, say on a cool summer night, this would be a really good drone for that. From there, we can also change over our color palettes. So like we have, have, uh, this one we've got more of like a black and white we've got another side kind of black and white so that's like a gray hot and a black hot or white hot and then we can translate over to something that kind of gives us some more different colors and then we're back here to the very first 
uh, one that we used here. Now we can also go and look at the actual layover and increase the opacity of the layover. So from here we can go and move it up so that now we are just seeing like pretty much what comes from the thermal sensor. So there's really not a whole lot of overlay going on there or we can bring it way down so we can see more of the color image coming through. So that's a really cool feature here. Now sticking on the cameras here, we're gonna cycle over back to our regular color camera. Remember, we've got two different cameras or three total cameras, but two color cameras here on the Anafi USA. So let's go and we'll look over towards Maniunk, like so. Let's go ahead and try to frame up the clock tower way out there. Getting a little bit of break up here. It says we have very strong interference with a very poor Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so we're looking straight at the, uh, the clock tower out there. Looks like I need to start recording again. So just sorry about that for the black frame. Just started re-recording there. From here, we can now zoom in up to 32 times. So as we zoom in here, we'll notice that as we get a little bit through, we end up switching over to the other camera. And this is our full zoom. I mean, look at that. We are way far away from the clock tower. And as we zoom out, you'll notice right, right there at around, let's see, I wonder what the, what the mark is. It's right around, I'm just kind of zooming in slowly, almost like once we get around to like the 10 or six or seven X times, like right around here is when it switches over to that second camera and gives us the further zoom range. So again, this is kind of like a hybrid zoom. It gives you two different focal lengths in terms of the two different cameras, but then you also have a lot of digital zoom added on top of that. And I would say for a small drone with this much of a zoom, it really is doing a good job at keeping things stable. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll zoom all the way out. We are also capturing video in 2.7K. Now, another really cool feature that I kind of wanted to show off here when we jump on over into, let's see, down at the bottom, we'll click on manual flight and then we'll swipe over to touch and fly. And from here, it pulls up our map and we can actually tell the drone where we want it to fly by just tapping on the map. So we definitely wanna make sure that our altitude is good so we don't run into things because this is an autonomous flight mission. But let's say we wanted to go and fly a little bit further down the river here. We'll go ahead and we'll just touch on that area, tap to start, and now the drone is going to by itself fly to that waypoint. So we can actually use the map button on the controller to switch between views. So this here is the view from the camera and then this is the view here from the, uh, from the map so we can see again where we want it to fly and it actually shows a countdown of how long it's going to take to fly into that area which is pretty sweet now, as I mentioned, something I really enjoyed about the Paradinafi is the software experience. I've already done a little bit of digging through the settings before taking this first flight, but I will say that during my time using the app during this flight right now, I do enjoy the layout of everything. I enjoy kind of how things are set up. This uh, menu settings are easy to, to dig through to kind of find things that you want to change to. So I'm definitely happy about that because that's one thing that always kept me coming back to the Paradinafi. Let's go ahead and we'll switch over to the camera. We're going to angle the camera around so that it's looking up river or down river. That is the one thing that the one thing that's tough. And again, we're flying in a very urban environment, but it's going to be that connection. So let's go ahead. We'll look down the river here. We'll go ahead. We'll we still have touch fly enabled. We'll press the button on the controller here. We'll go ahead. We'll touch kind of down towards the bridge, tap to start. And now the drone all by itself is making that flight. So what's great about this is that if you're somebody that is just starting out with drones, whether you're say uh, in law enforcement, whether you're conducting any sort of inspections, if you're somebody that's still a little bit new to the whole drone thing, you can automate your mission by just having the drone fly from spot to spot. You also have a flight planning option within here. So actually uh, we'll go ahead and we'll stop our touch to fly mission. So we'll hit stop at the top here. And then if we go and tap on our flight mode in the bottom, we can then tap on flight plan. And I've actually, I always already was messing around with it. We already have a flight plan saved in here from one that I was messing around with. We can go through and delete some of these. Um, let's see, not exactly sure how to delete them just because this is my first time using it. But I can say that from here, we can adjust kind of the waypoints that I have set. We can also adjust the arrows. So from here, we'll move the arrows around and we can choose where we want the drone to point at. So for example, where the drone is at right now, if I say wanted to tap on the first one here, and then if I wanted to tap on play at the bottom, the drone's now going to systematically go through our flight plan here from point to point to point. It's actually lowering, lowering its altitude as well. And now our entire flight is fully automated. So there's a great flight mode or a great waypoints flight mode built in here. So the drone is going down. It's going to go to its first waypoint eventually. 
<laughs> it's getting a little bit too low. I'm gonna take over here because I didn't set the altitude properly and I don't want the drone getting a little bit too low. So we'll, we'll look at this flight mode a little bit later in our full review, but again, just kind of for this initial demonstration here, I just wanted to show that we do have a waypoints flight mode built in and it definitely comes in handy because you can quickly set up missions while you're on the fly. Now really quickly, this controller, I will say that kind of during my setup time, I wasn't sure how I'd like it. There is a Samsung tablet built in here as your screen. The tablet could be a little bit brighter. I do have sunglasses here on a very bright and sunny day and I can still see the screen, but I would like maybe a little bit more brightness out of the screen itself. It also comes with a stylus. This is like the first drone I've ever flown with a stylus and I thought, why? Why would it come with the stylus? But I actually really enjoy being able to touch some of the things in here that are a little bit smaller on the screen. And think about it, if you're going to be using this and you have gloves on, it might be easier to use a stylus. So the fact that it's built in and comes on sort of like this little attached piece here is nice. It easily goes in the back. You can use it. You cannot use it however you want to rock and roll. Okay, let's jump out of our flight plan here. We'll jump back over to manual flight. So let's go over manual flight. And now we're back. Let's go ahead and fly it a little bit closer to us because I do want to share with you a couple of uh, couple of different flight modes also in here that again I personally haven't used before, but it's something that I just wanted to give a try. So we have a lot of really great, uh, I'll call it autonomous flight features within the drone. So we'll bring it back down. There we are. Nice smooth controls. Even with the. Um, even with, I would say, like the larger controller, sometimes I like smaller controllers because they're easy to use and manipulate, but even with the larger controller, I'm not really minding it all that much. All right, so let's come on over here. We have some different flight modes like follow me and like cameraman. So from here, we'll go ahead and we'll select, why don't we select follow me? We're gonna drag a rectangle to select a subject. So let's go ahead, we'll go and we'll climb up a little bit so we can see my full body. There we are. And let's see, we'll drag the rectangle like so. And now we're locked. We'll hit got it. I'm gonna step away from the camera here because I'm gonna have the drone automatically follow me. We've got some good contrast here, so the drone should do a good job at tracking me as the subject. So this is just a standard follow me mode. This works really good if you wanted to track a subject autonomously. I mean, right now, again, as I'm walking around, I'm totally not touching the sticks. It's doing all the work for me from rotating the drone, adjusting the, the yaw, adjusting the gimbal pitch, adjusting the position of the drone. So again, this is entirely done all by itself. Even right now, it's flying backwards. So you've got a lot of these great flight modes that are built in to the drone itself, which is something that sometimes these enterprise drones seem to skimp on. Okay, so I think that's gonna do it for our very first flight. We still have about 59% battery remaining. We'll go ahead and we'll cancel the follow me mode here. We'll hit stop at the top, stop, boom, done. Yeah, I'll tell you what, something that I really, really enjoy about all of Parrot's drones is the software. It really, they really do a nice job, which is saying something because when you start getting into these different drone manufacturers, they all have a different layout, they all have a different way that they do things, and Parrot always does things consistent and the same. Let's do a couple of more things here, actually, before we land, because we still have a lot of battery life. I mean, right now we still have 58% battery life remaining. We've got an estimated 32 minutes of flight time here with this drone. As we always know, we're not going to get the full estimated flight time because we, we will land with a little bit of battery remaining, but still. All right, let's spin her around here. We'll make sure we're back in manual flight. Let's go and do a little bit more testing with the thermal camera up here on top of there we are up here on top of the roof. So go ahead, we'll angle down. Now we've got a pretty clear view at, you know, what's going on up here on the roof. Let's say we were going to be using this drone for some sort of uh, roof inspection. Well, again, we'll go ahead, we'll toggle over to our thermal camera. Screen is going to go slightly black for a second, just as we switch over to the thermal camera and we're still rolling here. So right now we have the full spectrum of the thermal camera uh, available to us. We're using the entire, um, we're seeing the entire uh, temperature range because this is our first thermal mode setting. We do have a pretty good amount of detail coming out of this sensor. We can of course fly much closer down towards the building itself.
There we are. So if we want to get a closer look, like that gives us a much more detailed look at say some of the units here on the roof. And again, if maybe we're primarily interested in those hotter areas, we can toggle through and totally cut out everything that's cooler and only focus on the sections that have heat in the image. So again, that is something that is really nice to work with here if you're somebody that's only interested in the hotter areas rather than the cooler areas or maybe vice versa. And from here, you know, we're, we're capturing some, uh, some video, but you could also be capturing photographs if you wanted to. You could capture them for like some post-processing if you needed to with those thermal images. But again, for the sake of this video, we're only going to be capturing video. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll switch off of the thermal camera here. We'll get back to our color camera. Three, two, one, it counts down there in the bottom right corner. We're back and we're rolling. Now let's fly way up. I've got an idea. Why don't we try and look at the Philly skyline from all the way out here? So we'll go ahead and we'll pitch the camera up. Getting some pretty good break up here as we move around. All right, gotta get it dialed in here. Always, always tough to get used to a brand new drone. All right, so let's go from here. Now let's go ahead and start zooming way in. <laughs> See, I always mess up the zoom. I always end up going way too far in before I get myself framed up. Okay, let's frame ourselves up here onto the city and let's zoom. Let's see what we can see. Man, that is crazy. Let's pitch the camera up a little bit. It does dampen the controls when you're more zoomed in, which is nice. I mean, look at that. We got a nice clear view of the city. And we probably, gosh, we're probably like four or five miles out. Awesome. Bring it on over to the Liberty Buildings and the Comcast Towers. Nice. All right, so that is going to do it for our very first flight of the Parrot Anafi USA. I'll tell you what, I'm very impressed with how Parrot has been able to take their Anafi airframe and turn it into a commercial version of the drone. It's small, it's lightweight, and they've made it more rugged, and they've made it water and dust resistant, which is awesome. They've given it a lot of features that people in the industry are going to want to use. They've given us a great remote controller here, but there's still some things that I think need to be improved, one of which is the flight uh, transmission performance, right? So like the transmission between the drone and the controller. I mean, I'm experiencing breakups at a couple hundred feet away, and that is something that I know people are going to get very frustrated with. You could have all the great features that you want. You could have all the great software that you want. You could have a great camera on the drone, but what is it if you can't actually use the drone when you're more than a couple hundred feet away? I mean, for me, every DJI drone that I've used, I've been able to fly way down to the bridge totally fine, no breakup, no lag, and fly it back. And I could have kept going further. And that's something that really makes the experience of DJI's drones top notch is their transmission system. And unfortunately, using the Wi-Fi transmission system on the Peridonafi USA just isn't even close. Other than that, the drone itself, the controller, the features, all of which are exactly what someone's going to want in a drone. And if you're somebody that needs to buy a drone that is on the blue UAS list, this is going to be a great option for you. But just know that DJI's transmission system is going to make a huge difference when it comes to everyday flying. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Peridonafi USA and maybe some other commercial drones down in the comments section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.